are here, you will be put to work to compensate for the suffering caused by the war. We know what your sort did, Mr. Troutman. This lad could save us from relegation. This is not about football, Dad. He's a German. You can't just ignore that. To me and everyone round here, you're still the enemy. You, play football, keep your gob shut. What's up with Bert's neck? It's a war wound. Poor lad can hardly speak. And also, I have a light cord. He's German! You're not, are you? Yes, I am. Okay, so that's the trailer to the new movie The Keeper, which is out in Irish cinemas today. And I'm delighted to say we've got one of the stars of the film, John Henshaw, on the line to talk to us about this. John, this is the story of uh, Bert Troutman, as he came to be known, the uh, legendary Manchester City goalkeeper. Um, I think he's gone down into folklore as a guy who uh, wins a a cup medal playing with a a broken neck. But actually, his story is way more intricate and interesting than that. Is that fair to Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice to talk to you. Yeah, it's a great story. It's like, you know... there's a great danger that people are going to think it's just about football, but it's about 10% football. It runs right through it. But we start off with him Bert, involved in the war. He's in the trenches. And, you know, I mean, he nearly died about four times. He was captured about four times. A hell of a guy. And then he got caught. He was in a few concentration camps. But he finished up in a, a concentration camp near St. Helens, near Liverpool. Um, and my character, Jack Fry, sees him playing uh, inside the camp. And uh, he's a bit of a ducker and a diver, so he gets him out under the pretext of working for him, but gets him playing in goals for St. Helens. But then he meets my daughter, so he gets mad. So it's about him in the early days in the trenches, uh, and, uh, and then we show him the prison camp, and then we show him about St. Helens, and, and he shows my family, like the Fryer family and stuff like that. And it's got romance in it, you know, it's got issues about racial prejudice and reconciliation. And, and, and a lot of humour as well, you know, it's good fun. How close to reality is your character from the, the movie? Is that a, a real person? Is this a real relationship that happened in Bert's life? Yeah, he is actually. I mean, he comes across as, um, as the, the, the manager, but he was actually the secretary. He was like, he, he had a bit of a franchise with the coach, Jack Fryer. The, the actual coach was called George Fryer, different spelling, you know. But, uh, but Jack... Um, got together with some local businessmen and actually got a ground, built, helped him to build a ground and get St. Helens going. Uh, and he sort of hit it off with, with uh, Bert right away. He'd he come good friends, he invited him round, and of course he managed his start and he went to become his father-in-law. And I have met his family. His family came to the Manchester screening uh, and his daughter, who, who is older than me, uh, you know, she comes sad and she's about 80, lovely lady, Barbara. Um, and I said, well, you're not asking for spends, are you? Because you're not getting anything. But they was great. They said he was like that. He was like a chirpy guy, you know, had a bit of fun, a bit of a, a ducker and diver, as I say. So I think we're fairly near him. When you're playing somebody like that, is it a bit nervous when you meet the family afterwards, or does it actually matter? Because the, the, the work is done at that stage, it's kind of, you're not going to go back and change it or anything. But what, what's that interaction like? Yeah, you know, it's a little bit nervous, you know. But, I mean, I think most of the time, as long as you do... Uh, a friendly portrait of them, which I think it was, you know. Uh, the, the great that, uh, that their father or their relative or what have you, uh, that, that they're living on, you know, that you're representing them, as long as it's not in a negative way. Um, so, yeah, they, I mean, they was really tough. Yeah, they were lovely people anyway. I, I, I'm, so, I'm sure they wouldn't have told me anyway. They, they'd probably gone home and said, he wasn't a big fat long bloke like him, you know what I mean? But, uh, no, they, they was nice, you know. And Bert's family was there and all, and they was really nice, you know. John, this isn't the first uh, movie that you've been involved in that has football as a background, but that really isn't a football movie. You were uh, looking for Eric as well. Yeah, well, I actually, I, I did a little bit in a thing called When Saturday Comes, a Sean Bean thing. Um, and then I did, um, yeah, When Saturday Comes, and then it was like, one Jimmy Grimble, and then looking for Eric. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I think uh, I should get a, a, pe- a pension of the FA, really. <laughs> Um, a lot of people will remember looking for Eric and really liked it. What, what was your character in that? Would you just remind people? <laughs> uh, yeah, Meatballs. My character was Meatballs. Ed. I mean, we was all working in the post office and, um, you know, we was all looking after, like, there was two edits, of course, played by Stevie Vett and the other one by Eric Cantona. Uh, and we all devised a plan to uh, sort out the local hoodlum, if you like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it was pretty much the same sort of lively... Um, you know, larger than live character, which I, I normally play. You know, I, I, I'm interested in, in uh, your take on, on movies that have sport as a background, but that actually really aren't about sport. So this is a romance story. It's obviously a story about parenting. It's a story about, um, as you said, uh, 
racial stereotypes, all the kind of stuff that actually is incredibly current in the real world today, but that just uses football as a backdrop or sport as a backdrop. Yeah, yeah it's right. I mean, you know, as I say before, there's so much more to this than football. And, you know, it, it deals with sort of like modern issues today. Um, you know, you can sort of magnify it against, you know, the immigrant situation. You have death threats, um, you had hate mail, you know, people really hate that. As you can understand, a few years after the war, you can understand why, you know. But Marcus uh, Ross Muller, he's a great director, he, he said, you know, we wrote the scripts and, and that sort of stuff became relevant after. You know what I mean? He didn't do it with a purpose and there's no preaching with it, you know what I mean? He said, it's, it's a story, this. I mean, he went to see Bert Troutman and Bert said, don't just make it about me breaking my neck like in 1956 in the cup final. Make, make it a story. Tell the the story about my life and make it entertaining at the same time, you know. And to quote Rosie, because Marcus Rossmull, we call him Rosie, he said, it's very much a film uh, for ladies and for men with big hearts. There you go. That's kind of... So, uh, that's not, know, a, not a bad tagline. Like, they should, they yeah. should have stuck that one on the posters, John. It, well, it's not, you know what I mean? From zero to zero to zero, the guy, you know, he... he he was an uh, Iron Cross, you know, with the, the Luftwaffe. He got the OB over there, but then he was a prisoner of war, and then he broke his neck, you know. Uh, and he had sort of various issues in his life that dogged him all the time, you know. And, you know, it's, it's, it can be, it's just, you know, one minute you're laughing, and you're, then you're weeping and all that. It's got a bit of something for everybody. It's a, re it's a real good story. I mean, and we didn't tell, a fifth, you know, you could have done a film about his, his story uh, in the war, you know, when he was involved in the war, and then afterwards. And, and we, we go to the cup final... Uh, with, with City, but in life after that, he managed teams in in, uh, in one of the Nordic countries. But and certainly, I found out yesterday. I was at, um, at the football ground, City, and somebody told me that he managed in Pakistan. He managed a team over there. They're going to unveil a statue to him. It, it's one hell of a guy, and it's a real good story, you know. You're just about old enough, I think. You're a City fan. For, I should have said this a little bit earlier on. So you're, you know, obviously, I think you're just about old enough to remember the Burke track one here. Is that right? Oh, sure. I, I remember the Dead Sea when it was only poorly. <laughs> My dad actually took me when I was seven, and I did see him then. You know, when you're a kid, you're more sort of fascinated with the crowd than anything else. But this big six foot two, whatever he was, and, and golden blonde German in the net, you know, you thought, who's that like? And, I mean, yeah, of course, my dad told me the story. And then, of course, he, he's, uh, he, you know, he was a legend then, and he, he just went on and just got more and more. I mean, he was sort of voted... City's best player, like, you know what I mean, of all time. There's a big statue near the Etihad of him, uh, but hell of a guy. I, it feels as well that from, just from, as a City fan's perspective, it is important that this era of uh, City's history and, and the 70s, I would suspect, that there is kind of a reclamation project done on them because it's very easy for the other club in Manchester to completely overshadow the fact that Man City had their own rich heritage. It's obviously not as successful as Manchester United's, but that there is a story there that links the fans from Manchester with that team and that club, and that they're not just the product of all of the oil money that we've seen over the last half decades. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Yeah, and, it's great. and, and we, as we say to, to about Bert, really, when you think at the time when they took Bert on, um, it was like. He, has, he wasn't tried and tested, and in spite of the flack, if you're part of the expression, this untried German guy that everybody was sending hate mail and death threats to, you know, they, they took a chance on the guy and they stood by him. And I thought, that, that's really good, you know what I mean? That, that's about giving people a chance. And, you know, we were grateful at the time, City, with Rabbi Altman, who was, he was like the rabbi uh, of the Jewish community in Manchester, he wrote a letter to the time saying, look, come on, you know, let's get over this. You can't blame one man for all your ills. Because there was big protest by the Jewish community outside the grounds, you know. Uh, and he, he put a letter in, and eventually sort of they, they went back. But you, you can understand people that, um, you know, I mean, I have a line in, in the film where you say, well, you, you can't argue with the bereaved, you know. They look straight through you. So, I mean, fair play to sit on that. I mean, City was going since 1894, you know, and before United. And even after the, the Munich thing, City used to let them train and even let them play it, you know. They, they've sort of got a, a bigger history than United, really. Uh, and on the um, you know winning prizes things, uh, we're coming up the rail. Yeah, missed uh, missed that last bit there. Sorry, John. Say again. I'm saying uh, as regards you know winning trophies and prizes that we're, we're coming up the rail fast. You know. Yeah, yeah. For for this year, I'll close the gap. All right, John. Great to have you in the show. Thanks a million for joining us. Cheers. Yeah, thank you very much. Take care, God bless. Best of luck with the movie. It's called The Keeper, and um, John Hinshaw there, obviously, is the coach-stroke father-in-law of uh, Bert Trettman.